Let's talk about a plant so deadly it was used to repel werewolves. At least, historically speaking. Wolfsbane, also known as Aconitum, or if you're feeling correct, Monkshead, is basically nature's way of saying if it has a name that sounds like it can kill a wolf, that's probably a good sign how to eat it. It's got purple flowers, pointy hoods, and a body count that would make a 16th century king jealous. So buckle up as we dive into the botanical equivalent of a poison dip shuriken. So what even is Wolfsbane? Wolfsbane is part of the Ranunculaceae family. But you know, just to be sure, let's call it the buttercup family. Which sounds innocent enough, right? Well, that's where you're wrong. That's like finding out your childhood teddy bear has tested positive for syphilis. This plant is native to mountainous regions in Europe and Asia, thriving in damp meadows and shady areas, like Detroit. It's not the name Aconitum roughly translate to without struggle, which is ironic because if you mess with this thing, your body will struggle. A lot. Wolfsbane got a reputation that spanned centuries from being a witch's go-to potion ingredient to being the main sign by wolf god Senpai Onisama for wolves to reconsider its life choices. Here's where it gets cool and a little spooky. Back in the day, farmers had a real problem with wolves. Wolves would show up, eat their livestock, and escape before they could do anything. So humans being humans, they thought, why not train ourselves to be capable enough to fight off wolves? make an elaborate security system to lessen casualties, and use grazing lands that have lesser chances of having wolves in them. How about we use poison? But listen buddy, I got circumcised three hours earlier than everyone in this village. So if anyone has authority here, that'll be me. They lace meat with wolfsbane because, fun fact, wolfsbane contains neurotoxins so potent it makes cyanide look like an over-the-counter sex-enhancing drug. Now here's where things get even wilder. Some folklore says wolfsbane wasn't just used to kill wolves, it was also believed to ward off werewolves. Yeah, apparently some guy named Hans in 15th century Bavaria looked at the full moon and said, yep, better rub some plant juice in my doors, just in case a werewolf would show up. Now, what makes it so deadly? Wolfsbane contains a cocktail of alkaloids, the main one being aconitin, which if goes near anywhere near your bloodstream mean, congratulations, you've been promoted. Good luck. Did you know? Living. Here's what aconitin does. First, you'll feel a little tingly. Then your fingers go numb. And before you know it, your body is auditioning for the walking dead. Then aconitin messes with your ion channels, which are like the bouncers of your cells. It tells your heart to beat out of rhythm until it just gives up entirely. Like trying to dance disco during a heart attack while someone throws bricks at you. That's your heart of wolf's pain. It's so toxic that even handling the plant without gloves can be dangerous. One minute you're admiring its purple petals, and the next, you're doing an impression of a fish out of water. Now, let's talk about the two whims, murder and medicine. People have been using wolfsbane to off each other for centuries. Ancient Greeks allegedly used it to poison enemy water supplies because, you know, diplomacy is overrated. In Rome, Emperor Claudius may or may not have been poisoned with wolfsbane by his wife Agrippina, which up until now is still up for debate, but seeing as it's effective in offing emperors, I think that's a good idea how lethal this plant is. Oh, and let's not forget the ninjas of feudal Japan. These guys would coat their weapons with wolfsbane extract, so not only would you die from the stab wound, but also from the slow, agonizing nerve poisoning. On the flip side, some cultures used wolfsbane in medicine, because who doesn't love a little fix you or kill you vibe in their healthcare? Traditional Chinese medicine sometimes employed tiny doses of wolfsbane to treat pain and inflammation, but in all honesty, it's more effective as a killing concoction rather than for medicines. While wolfsbane is occasionally studied for its potential applications in very controlled doses, most medical professionals avoid it like the plague. Why? Because the line between therapeutic and lethal is so thin it might as well not exist. Even when used in traditional medicine, Wolfsbane is heavily processed to reduce its toxicity, and even then it's considered a last resort. So how do you spot it in the wild? You're on a hike, frolicking in the meadows, and you see a plant with tall spikes of purple flowers. Welp, you just found a wolfsbane. Its flowers have a distinctive hood-like shape, which is why it's also called Mock's Hood. But don't let the name fool you. This thing is more likely to send you to heaven than to absolve your sins. The plant can grow up to 5 feet tall which means it's basically the Tom Cruise of the toxic flower world. Small, but capable of ruining lives. Beyond its deadly reputation, 
Wolfsbane plays a critical role in the ecosystems where it thrives. As a native plant in mountainous regions of Europe and Asia, it provides nectars for pollinators like bees and butterflies. Surprisingly, some insects such as specialized bumblebee species have evolved to tolerate its toxicity and even rely on it as a food source. However, wolfsbane isn't just a pretty flower helping pollinators. It also has a built-in defense system. Its extreme toxicity keeps herbivores at bay, ensuring it doesn't get casually nibbled by passing deer or people who can't stop shouting that they're vegetarians. Now, if you're the type of person who loves living dangerously, you might be thinking, hey, I should totally plant wolfsbane in my garden. It's pretty, and it keeps werewolves away. But let me stop you right there, my mentally challenged friend, because wolfsbane is not your average gardening flower choice. In fact, growing it comes with more red flags than a forgotten minefield in Vietnam. Because wolfsbane isn't just a danger to you, it's a liability to everyone around you. That curious neighbor kid who can't resist touching stuff? The overly enthusiastic dog that eats everything? One accidental encounter with wolfsbane and suddenly you're writing apology cards to giving families? Handling it safely requires gloves, protective clothing, and a kind of caution usually reserved for disarming bombs. Even tiny amounts of the toxin can seep through cuts or scratches on your skin. So unless your dream garden aesthetic is death trap check, it's probably best to leave wolfsbane to professionals. Then there's the legal side of things. Some places regulate or outright ban the cultivation of wolfsbane due to its toxicity. After all, it's not just a plant. It's basically a murder weapon that happens to be rooted in the ground. So before you start digging holes in your backyard, check your local laws. Because nothing says awkward like explaining to the cops why there's a dead child and a dead dog in your backyard. So there you have it. Wolfsbane. It's beautiful, deadly, and the perfect metaphor for bad decisions. If you ever come across it in the wild, admire it from a distance. And remember that Mother Nature is just as capable of creating reasons to horrifyingly kill you as she is sunsets. And remember, buddy. Don't plant this if you have neighbors who have kids and dogs, and apply it to your door if you ever feel like there's a werewolf problem in your area. Other than that, stay classy.